everyone. This lecture today will cover coy surgical treatment. This is a rehash of the presentation that was given to the ZNA NorCal Coy Club this past Saturday. So today what we're going to cover are indications for surgical treatment, anesthetic considerations, some common procedures, follow-up care, and the resulting complications that may occur. So indications for treatment. Sometimes be fairly obvious. So help, my fish has a blank on him. So this is a little goldfish named Sparky who has a very large tumor attached to his cornea. So in this case, this whole eyeball would have to be removed since it's impossible to try to get these two to separate without the chance of regrowth. Sometimes the indications are not so obvious, such as the case for internal tumors. You might say, help, my fish looks like they ate a cantaloupe, watermelon, softball. This koi here has a severely enlarged abdomen towards the caudal part of his body, towards the back, the tail which you can see as uh, fairly uncommon in these guys, even when they are very fat. So like I said, it's usually fairly obvious if it's an external tumor, like our little guy with the tumor on his eyeball. However, with internal swellings, usually we'll take an aspirate, stick a needle in, and get a sample. And it can be one of the three following things. If it's eggs, the fish is pregnant and won't require any surgical intervention unless the eggs are retained for an extended period. An oviparm can be used through your veterinarian if those eggs need to be released. If the aspirate comes back as clear fluid, we have had examples of cysts in koi. It needs to be drained. Usually using a fancy suction device makes it a lot faster and easier for the fish. And if you pull back brown fluid or blood, this will be neoplasia or tumor and will require surgical removal or else they will grow inside the fish and compress all of their other internal organs. So we can always get cytology for confirmation of any of these samples. However, it's usually unwarranted since the following treatment is usually pretty straightforward. There are some advanced diagnostics we can perform to help narrow down what's going on in the fish. Radiographs, however, are not very helpful for soft tissues, including internal organs and tumors. If it surrounds the swim bladder or bone, it's much easier to tell from radiographs what's going on. Ultrasound can be used to compare eggs versus a cyst. It has been used to determine the salmon spawning cycle by measuring egg diameter and can also be used in koi very similarly. However, we need to create some more reference values for this. Always consider the water quality when you're working up a candidate for surgery. You will always need to test the water to make sure that the recovery will be as stress-free as possible. So if you do need to set up a side system with separate filtration with good water quality, please keep in mind that poor water quality will lead to a decreased prognosis due to the additional stress. You can also get additional stressors from the habitat that may not be poor water quality, including overcrowding, poor nutrition, and an inappropriate environment such as a koi that's kept in an indoor tank or a pond that is too small for it. Prognosis. There are a few different things we can use to see how well a fish will do post-operatively. Like I said, it will be decreased with poor water quality. Decreased if the fish is anorexic and not eating on their own. This is usually not a good indicator that they will do well. It can also be decreased with a prolonged wait. So you know your fish has a tumor and you sit on it not making a decision for a while. Unfortunately, the tumor will grow and may progress into the anorexic state, or it may take up a larger part of their body that cannot be removed surgically. So, as far as surgery goes, all fish are anesthetized into a surgical plane of anesthesia before we even attempt to cut them open. So, some considerations you need to make with your veterinarian. 
MS222, also known as tricane or finquel, versus clove oil. Both work just fine. It's usually a personal preference of the veterinarian. MS222 is my preference. I find it has a faster induction and recovery time. However, it does tend to make the water more acidic, so you will need to use a buffer such as sodium bicarbonate, also known as regular baking soda. Again, you need to make sure you have clean pond water for recovery, and the fish can certainly recover in their home pond if it has good water quality. So, before we even start a procedure, we have a separate tank that's used for induction. So this tank will have a higher concentration of the anesthetic than it would be on the operating table. So the fish will go in here until they reach an anesthetic depth that is congruent with surgery. So what does this look like? The fish will be respiring on their own or breathing. They'll lack their writing reflex, so they'll usually be on their side. They'll be insensitive to pain or noxious stimuli. Usually this is done by a simple scale pull test. You can use an ECG or pulse ox to monitor heart rate. Um, it's totally at the doctor's discretion. So, we get the fish in there. Now it's time to see if they're ready for surgery. The fish is too light. They're not um, unconscious enough yet. You can add a little bit more of the drug very slowly. You don't want to go too hard too fast or your fish will be way too deep. And in that case you'll need to add fresh water. So we have doses that we know work pretty much um, consistently in koi and goldfish. However there are always the exceptions. So if you're not sure what the dose is please consult someone who does and make sure you know what you're doing before you get too far into surgery. Like I said, a good testing of uh, anesthetic depth is to pull a scale, which you will need to do anyway, especially if you're making abdominal incisions. If not, you could use uh, over oh, 100 scalpel blades trying to cut into the skin when you go through the scale. So pull the scales before you make any incisions, and if the fish is flinching, it means that they're too light. So some common procedures for koi. Preoperative considerations, water quality, can't say it enough. If the water quality is bad, they need to recover somewhere else. Case closed. Blood work can be performed, CBC and chemistry, make sure there's no underlying issues. If they do have a history of another procedure, how did they respond to the anesthesia then? Some fish are more susceptible than others. It is also species dependent. And fish that are repeatedly dosed with the same drug can build up resistance to it, so it may be time to switch the drug or put them at a higher concentration than you usually would. So commonly what we perform on external lumps and bumps is called simply a lumpectomy. So usually this is a very tiny wart, bump, papilloma, not going to cause any serious health problems, but it is a concern from the owner. So we'll try to scrape off sample for cytology. These are mostly epithelial or skin growths. Don't have any underlying structures under the scales. We'll slice them off with a scalpel, clean with betadine, uh, an iodine-based cleanser, can submit for histology, and usually does not warrant any antibiotic treatment or any follow-up treatment. Next most common procedure is an enucleation, basically removing of an eyeball. This one here is warranted because you can see it has become quite a tumorous growth and the eyeball structure itself is no longer present. So we're going to walk through a very basic procedure for removing the eye. You start by cutting the conjunctiva around the globe to loosen it. Uh, fish eyeballs are very round and squirrely and squiggly. So make sure that you have a clamp ready to hold it steady. You'll gently retract the globe, pull it out of the socket, then using small curved hemostats, clamp off the nerves and blood vessels behind the globe. The globe will be cut from the nerves and vessels just in front of the hemostats, and that can be removed. And then the socket will be inspected for any additional tissue before removing the hemostats and making sure that blood flow has ceased. 
Here are our little guys without their eyeballs. It's always good to monitor the area for excess bleeding, but please keep in mind that it will always look like there's more blood than there actually is, since when blood mixes with water, it looks like a lot more blood. Fish are very good clotters, so it's not really too much of a concern in fish, especially for just a little eyeball. If you're not going to be clamping off those vessels, it will be a bigger problem. So if you have a big oozing wound there, it needs to be clamped before it becomes too much of a problem. Fish can survive very well with just one eye or no eyes. They can smell their food using their nostrils. They have their lateral line systems along the side, which is used to detect water currents around them so they can feel their buddies swimming next to them and the sides of their pond. Most fish that live in groups will actually find a buddy that they stick pretty close to, and that will be their buddy seeing eye fish. So they'll follow them around to feeding time, cruising around the pond. Um, great adaptation that these guys have come up with. So you can give a pain med for this, uh, depending on how much uh, pulling on the eye you usually do. It does not necessarily warrant antibiotic treatment because it's all external. Um, it's going to be exposed to the tank water, so make sure that your water quality is exceptional. Here, a little Sparky, that guy with the giant eye tumor we saw previously. This is him one year post-surgery. So you can see here the skin has grown over the socket, and you wouldn't even notice that he never had an eye there. So certainly the most advanced procedure we do is a Salomic Exploratory, also known as Abdominal Explore. This is necessary for neoplasia removal, tumor removal, foreign body retrieval, fish ate something that they cannot pass or digest, and spaying and neutering. So again, they have the same sedation in MS222 that we spoke of earlier. They'll go up on our surgery table, the scales would be removed, prepped with betadine, and then a clear exotic drape is applied. So here's our table that has been specially adapted for fish. It's an acrylic V stand that sits on top of a standard 10 gallon aquarium tank. The aquarium tank is filled with the maintenance anesthetic solution, which is then pumped up through that tube into the fish's mouth and over their gills. So they'll be breathing the entire time on our uh, recirculating system. The bubble wrap is there to provide them a little bit of cushion. Uh, basically, it's very cheap and waterproof. So now we'll be going through a full abdominal procedure. Uh, this video is also available on YouTube if you're interested in showing it to your family and friends. I have a huge personality. Okay. So. Oh, it fits perfectly. Hey, buddy. Too high? Yep. Too much? Or? No, you're good. Okay. Just don't shove it down his throat. How about that? So you can see it coming out both sides. Just enough? Yep. He's doing good. So you can see here the fish with the tube that he's mouth and the pain medication. Oh, okay. This is going to fix sides here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Here's where I mentioned the scales being removed from the incision site so we can get the scalpel in Yeah, and usually with these tumors, I try to get them out as whole as possible. Not so twitching he at all, have a rather but still large breathing on his own. So yeah. he's at a very um, good incision on his stomach. Yeah. Okay. But I just want to try to get this out whole. It actually feels quite liquidy, so there might be a lot of liquid coming out as soon as I. No, well, you're no, okay. I to, I would you're okay. See. No, I mean, is this okay? Okay. The very, yeah. very fluid tumor I'm looking at right there. I don't know if you want to see that right there. Is it? That is a big pocket full of fluid. So I'm going to go ahead and rupture that. It's going to drain right into here. So this is the one little gross squeamish part if anybody wants to look away at this point. Just trying to separate it from the other internal organs. Right. Usually we have intestines that are associated with this. We want to make sure that we don't sever those. Right. It's 
right now my fingers are just breaking down the tissue that's adhering it to his to his back. Oh, okay. I just popped right up in my hand. Make sure I don't have any intestines with me. Sliding. So yep. So this is the only solid part that was in there. How are we doing? Are we doing okay? We're good. All right, stop. It's just to rinse out all that stuff that's in there. Oh, okay. All right, go again, please. Oops, that's all right. He lives in water. <laughs> all right, great. Good. I'm used to it. You're not that cold. Yeah. So fish can be sutured up just like a dog or a cat. He has a name, Using uh, non-absorbable yeah, filaments in their skin itself. <laughs> uh, no, unfortunately not. If I had gotten in there and say, seen the ovary like last time, I could say yeah. it was a female, but yeah. this guy is a little hard to tell. Someone else join the party. How's it going? Just sewing Anything them up. Anything else you'd like to say about your surgery for Fish camera? did good. Fish did good. All right, we're going to get a quick wait, and then I'm going to pop him right in the net. Okay, so you go ahead and stop. And go. I'm going to pull his little eyeball out. All right, so we started at five pounds. He is now three pounds. So that was quite wow. a bit that we removed. It's mostly him. fluid. Oh, he can go right back in there, huh? Yep. In the net. Yeah. Oh, so he'll stay confined to the net for a while? Until he wakes back up. Okay. Will he turn himself out over? Um, I actually have to take some air out of him first. I'm just going to put this one for extra protection. I don't have to give him multiple shots. Right. Yeah, that's all right. Well, sometimes he's full of air and can't really ride himself properly. Yeah. See, yeah, I'm getting a bunch of air. Oh, so you just use like that syringe and pull it back out. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of hard to get out during surgery just because he's kind of right. gone concave on me. that is how you do surgery in a fish. If you would like to view this video again, you can find it on YouTube under Koi Abdominal Surgery. So, moving on. With this procedure and uh, specifically, the little fish was under anesthesia for only 30 minutes and we were in and out the door under an hour. So, very quick procedure. Once you get in there, just got to isolate that tumor and get it removed. We did one recently where the guy actually had multiple lobes of tumors along both sides of his abdomen, and he was under anesthesia for almost an hour. So, it really depends on what the state of the tumor is when we get in there. Like I said, we use a non-absorbable suture, a nylon monofilament, one layer closure through the skin. These will remain in for 10 to 14 days, and then we will go back and remove them. Unfortunately, this little guy's histopathology was not sent to a lab that regularly sees fish tissue, so they were a little confused as to what they were looking at. From now on, we send all of our fish tissues to a zoo pathology lab that sees them regularly. So when submitting tissues, make sure you know where to send them. Went back 10 year days later, sutures were ready to be removed, and you can see here, all those black ties have been removed and he is all healed up. So, chance of recurrence? It is possible. We do need more information from histology. So far, only one of our cases have regrown. We've done, well, now as of yesterday, or two days ago, nine total procedures, and still six are alive, excuse me, five are alive and doing well. So, unfortunately, we've lost a couple to. Um, predators, and another was euthanized during surgery. Um, the one that regrew, unfortunately, did succumb. And then the guy that we saw a few days ago had a very invasive tumor growth, and we just weren't able to do everything in time. So, that 
So what happens if you wait too long? You know your fish has a problem and you're just a little hesitant to get it seen by a veterinarian. So I'll tell you the story of this little guy who lived out in Hawaii. We were talking with the owners and getting ready to fly from our office in Santa Cruz out to Hawaii to help this little fish. Um, and unfortunately, it just got a little too long and unfortunately it died the day before we were supposed to get out there. So thankfully, the owners were able to ship us the fish when it, after it had died. And what we found was that this tumor had basically taken up the entire fish's abdomen. So if you have a fish that you know has an issue, please take care of it sooner rather than later. And we'll hopefully prevent this from happening to your fish. So what happens if you follow up too long? You know your fish has a problem and you're just a little hesitant to get it seen by a veterinarian. So I'll tell you the story of immediately following surgery. You need to make sure they're able to swim on their own. Again, you saw us take the air out so they have to be able to right themselves. If possible, recover them in their home tank or pond. This has uh, places that they know are safe with other fish companions that they recognize and is a very less stressful environment. Antibiotic treatment is usually warranted for these as is pain management that will last for a couple days depending on the temperature of the pond. You can add salt to help with oxygen uptake. For the weeks to months following surgery, you need to go back and do a suture removable if you use non-absorbable sutures. Monitor for healing. It will take about 10 to 14 days. Please keep in mind this is temperature dependent, just like everything else in fish. You want to make sure they return to their full appetite and maintain your top-notch water quality. So, some possible complications with these procedures. Delayed healing. So like I said, coin metabolism and immune systems are temperature dependent. If the water is too cold, say low 60s, they're not going to heal very well. So you need to move them to a warmer water to promote healing, either a hospital or quarantine tank. Our hospital here in Santa Cruz was specifically designed to help these patients recover faster. So they're all heated in their own little spa environments. Regrowth can occur. Always great to submit a histology sample to make sure you know what you're dealing with. Infection, again, can always occur. We give them a broad spectrum aerobic antibiotic coming out of surgery. However, if you still get a resulting infection, you may need to culture and see if you're dealing with a species in particular that needs a specific antibiotic. Funguses can be secondary, but these are more commonly seen with poor water quality issues. So that concludes our talk for today. If you have any additional questions, I ask that you please contact our office. Our number here is 831-346-6151. You can also find more information on our website, avsnca.com. We have a button on there. If you suspect your koi or other fish has some sort of tumor, we're happy to help you with that. We have a Help My Fish button. Go ahead and click it, and that'll walk you through the options available. So I hope that everyone enjoyed the talk today, and.